Hello everybody, it's Farm Sim Guy here, hope you're all doing well. We're back on Bulls Gap and we are at the distillery. Now if you remember, at the end of the live stream on Wednesday, we just produced our first few bottles. Now this has run for a little bit longer, we have got nearly four pallets here. Um, so not bad output from just 8% of a trailer full of corn here. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump back in this. We're going to head back to the farm and we are going to load up the combine and uh, get it into this and do a full load back. Um, there's going to be quite a lot of whiskey here. I'm really interested to see how much we're going to make from this and it's definitely going to help us fund some new equipment for the farm. So we'll run this back to the farm and, and we will continue the combining. Uh, and in the meantime, we'll need to think about how we ship some of that from the distillery to the sell point. So potentially looking at a flatbed trailer or something like that. Uh, maybe even some way of... Uh, getting it onto the trailer as well to start with it might i might just ask the shop if they'll let us borrow their uh, their loader for the day just to load up our first load it all depends on uh, how much uh, we get from this and how much uh, it sells for what we'll uh, buy first but it's possible we might get ourselves a little forklift truck or something for the uh, for the distillery as well but for now we will run back down here i mean super exciting super exciting when you think you know where we've come from to having that distillery uh, and the money that's potentially going to make uh, you know we're really going to start to think soon about branching out maybe even buy our first official piece of land which will be really exciting um, it's actually one of these two fields here actually so uh, if I stay on the road uh, fields eight and nine just here so this is field eight it's not a huge field but it'd be quite a nice one and just behind that there is field nine as well so we'll see how the money pans out um but we might want to grab one of those pretty soon because there's actually crop on it that we could use as well so um lots of lots of big decisions to be made um we've also got a lot of kit that needs upgrading too so we need to think about that so uh, it's all go on the farm it is all go on the farm okay here we are we are back and the combine is waiting to be unloaded so we'll go and find him we'll get this unloaded and we will jump into a little time lapse until this field is done Okay, while the combine's running up there and uh, we're loading up the trailer, we're going to take advantage of this downtime. We are going to upgrade our windrow, for one thing. We found a nice, very cheap one that's four and a half meters compared to the three meter one we've got. So we're going to sell the one we've got and we're going to upgrade to the four and a half meter. There is a bigger one in there, a big eight and a half meter. I think that's too big. Um, so it's going to be easier just to do a, a straight swap with this one and. Uh, take it from there so we'll take this down to the shop and we will bring back the new one so I will uh, just show you what I'm gonna get after I've done this I'll just unhitch move the tractor out of the way um, it is $1,200 so incredibly cheap uh, I could do a little bit more shopping around but actually this is that's probably ideal for what we want this is actually fully repaired so we sell that for 
1150, which is good. Oh, look, the combine needs unloading too, and we'll get back to that in a second. But my new windrower is going to be this one. It's just 1200, so it's almost a like for like replacement, but it's 4.5 meters wide rather than what we have here, which is the 4 meter wide one. Um, we did look at this. And I was very tempted by this, but 8.5 meters is just, I mean, I think it's too big for what we need uh, with the size of the fields we've got at the moment. So um, I think we're just going to be sensible. Again, at this price, we can just sell it very quickly again uh, at any point. So we'll buy that. We'll get it hooked up. I mean, it's a, it's a vintage piece of machinery. But we'll get it hooked up. Uh, maybe the little Universal can run that quite nicely down the farm. We'll keep the big attractors for other stuff but I'm going to be interested to see how it runs so we will see you back at the yard so here we are back at the yard what I'm going to do quickly unhitch this guy that seems to be catching on something there not too bad I'm going to spin this guy around and park him up just here I'm going to grab the universal out of the shed and he can pull this and we're going to get these into windrows uh, because we want to we want to get that straw sold um, not so concerned about the barley straw to be honest that won't bring us much money in but the corn stalks corn stalks will do a great job so uh, it's just been practical with time while the combine's running we could just sit and watch the combine if we wanted but what's the point in that we might as well do some other work at the same time as well so in the barley field on the left here we'll do that this is bouncing around quite a lot isn't it Okay, so proof this is an incredibly old tool. Look at this. We've got to do it by hand. There is no automation on this one. Now we get to here. There we go. We've got to push it manually into place. Lock it into place like so. I think that's everything. It's only the two IC bits there. So it should now spin around because the wheel's in the appropriate place. Let's give it a little go and see what happens. There we go. It's working. How good is that? Brilliant. That is a proper old-fashioned tool. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay, that'll do us for now. I'm sure we're not going to keep a hold of this for long, but uh, it was a bit of fun. So let's get this bundled up into some right, nice big windrows and then we can get the baler on this uh, in, a, in a nice efficient way. Okay, we'll see you shortly with this too. Okay, so our little experiment with this windrower has been a bit of an abject failure. We've made more of a mess than we have um, tidied up. So what I'm going to do, I think that I'm just going to accept defeat on that one. That was just a bad call. I mean, to be honest, I think in this, this stage of the farm, I don't need to be worrying about cheap kit like this. I should have just bitten the bullet and bought that. Uh, that 8 metre John Deere wind rower. In fact, I'm going to go back and I'm going to buy it now because um, this is just not practical. It just isn't isn't up to scratch for what we need now. So I am going to uh, drop this off. I'm just going to drop it here, to be honest. Uh, I'm not even going to bother walking all the way back to the uh, shop with it. And we are going to get rid of it because it is just not, not up to scratch anymore. So, um, you know, I thought it'd be quite good fun. Uh, but it's just a waste of time. And to be honest, um, I know I'd get a little bit more for it if I sold it at the shop, but my time is more valuable than this. And this as well, this little tether, um, I think we'll just sell that as well. We don't need that anymore. Um, the mower, and the, I mean, this stuff, uh, we'll keep a hold of it for now, but uh, that's going to go very, very soon. But for now, I think what we'll do, we'll pop the... Uh, put the universal back in the shed here 
jump in the John Deere here. We'll send him straight to the shops. And uh, we'll go and unload that combine yet again. We are nearly done in the cornfield though, which is good. I'm looking forward to getting that sent down to the distillery. So let's send him off to the shop and we'll go and unload the combine. Now we know this combine is not really cutting it. You can see by the amount of stuff it's left in the field that, you know, again, it's time to uh, upgrade kit. This was great while it lasted, but we do need something bigger now. No question about that. So we will let this finish what it's doing. I think we'll manually drive around and pick up all the bits at the end. Make sure we've optimized the harvest. But um, definitely, I mean, of all the things we need to buy now, I think combine is the priority. Um, we've got cedars and drills that will last um, for the next little while with no problems. Although, you know, they could be bigger. But at this moment in time, I can live with those. So really, the combine is the thing that's going to make the biggest difference for the next harvest. Especially if we buy fields as well. You know, I'm looking at field 8 here. 69,000 and field 9, 154,000. Field 8 we will buy now. I'd like to hopefully get that. There's barley in that field. I'd like to buy that pretty quickly before um, it changes. Because at the moment it is due to be harvested. So we'll try and grab that before that crop goes um, and make a little bit more money that way. But we'll finish this field off and then we'll get this corn down to the distillery and start thinking about how we can move some of those pallets of whiskey. So there we go. He's just finished the field. Now he's saying it needs to be unloaded, but what we're going to do, if we jump in here, you can see he's only 35% full. Um, so we'll take this opportunity to turn course play off and we will drive this ourselves and we'll pick up all these straggly ends that have been left in the field because there's, there's too much to ignore here. If it was the odd little bit around the edge, I would be a little bit more uh, inclined to just plough it under. But this, uh, this seems to be quite a lot here. So I'm going to just make the most of the crop. I thought we would get more than this as well with the yield. I'm surprised that we've got uh, less than we got from that barley field over the way. I can't work out why yet, but I am going to work it out because I really want to make sure we optimise the crops we've got. So possibly a bit of lime on this field maybe next time. Yeah, I know it needs ploughing as well. It's one of the few fields that needs ploughing, so we'll uh, we'll definitely replant maybe do a rotation through the fields as well so we're not putting too much uh, stress on the soil by replanting corn in the same field time after time but um, let's pick these bits up and we'll get it unloaded and then the exciting bit we'll run the truck down to the distillery okay that's all the bits collected up we just need to get this unloaded now and we are done so what I'll do, because I've got the the header for the, um, the barley and wheat, I'm going to hold on to that, I think. In fact, I'm not going to sell it just yet. I'm just going to wait to see if we get enough money for this other barley field before I sell it, because I would probably use it one last time on that field and uh, then get rid of it because we can't afford a new combine just yet. It's quite it's quite an outlay, especially if we're going to buy this Winrow as well. So um, much as I would love a new combine, I'm just going to be... I'm going to err on the side of caution, is what I'm going to do. I'm going to err on the side of caution. So we'll park this back up by the shed again. Uh, we'll go and head over to the shop, buy that new Winrow, bring that back. He can be running the fields while we run the truck up to the distillery um, and then we need a flatbed trailer as well so you know it's a it's a juggling it's a juggling effort at the moment we've just got to decide how we spend our money and what we spend it on so um, we'll see you at the shop right let's get this windrower bought and we're gonna go for the John Deere there we go but we're gonna get it second hand purely because it's a £4,600 saving. That is worth um, buying second hand for. So 
Um, we'll just jump out now. There it is. Now that is a proper bit of kit. It's probably actually too big for what we need. Um, but we're going to get some awesome windrows off it. Which means we'll um, get jobs done pretty quick. So I'm all for that. I am all for that. So um, we'll repair it and we'll head back to the farm. While we're at it, um, we are going to invest in a new baler as well. There we go. The 690 John Deere. We're going to get big square bales. It's a very reasonably 12,000 or secondhand 9,600. So it's within our budget because, like I said, we still need to get a, uh, a flatbed for shifting... Um, for shifting the whiskey from the distillery. So um, we will sell our fantastic round baler that has been so good for so long. Uh, the wrapper as well needs to go at some point as well, but obviously we don't have uh, a hook for that. So we're gonna have to do a few runs backwards and forwards to the shop. But for now, we'll say goodbye to this old girl as well. She's been amazing. Um, but we will send this down to the shop and uh, hopefully they won't crash into each other as they pass each other on the road. But we'll come back with the new baler as well. So here's the John Deere back from the shop. Let's get that into, let's do the, let's do the barley field first, shall we? Let's get that done and then we'll move over to the corn field. But this is, this thing's huge. It's absolutely massive. Um, let's unfold it. This is going to do an amazing job. And at the same time, before I start that, I'm just going to move this out of the way, just so to avoid any potential collision issues. Cover this up. We'll move this out of the way, and uh, we will just run this in the field. I was going to put it on a course play, but... Um, it's so massive. I reckon we could cover that off in just a couple of uh, in a couple of passes. So before we run this to the, in fact, let's run this to the distillery. I was going to say before we do that, we could run this to the distillery. But actually, this could be producing whiskey whilst we're um, windrowing our fields and baling our fields. So let's get this to the distillery and uh, let's start making some money. So here we are at the distillery. Let me just roll this in and get it unloaded and it will instantly fire up the distillery again. But this is going to um, give us quite a lot more. This is going to give us quite a lot more. Now, I have got more barley than I have got uh, corn, which is a little bit of an issue. Um, I thought I would get more corn out of my field than I will. So um, we need to think about how we top that up. Maybe we overload on corn in our next harvest rather than barley. I think we've got a lot of barley, but that's that done. Um, we will head back to the farm. Let that produce for a few hours. Okay, so here we are back. Now we aren't gonna need this for a little while, this trailer. So what I'm gonna do, I'll run it around here. I'm gonna just line it up alongside the logging trailer, I think. Now, I did notice there was a couple of uh, trees as well sitting up uh, that had been obviously cut down and been left. Um, so some of those might come in handy for some uh, some firewood. So we might go and collect those in a minute as well. But for starters, we'll get this windrowing done. And I'm going to do it by hand. I will drop on a little time lapse just because this windrow is so huge. I'm interested to see how quick it will it will do this field. So we will see you in a couple of minutes.
Okay, we're just on the last row here. Hopefully this goes some way to tidying up that absolutely appalling mess that the other uh, windrower made. So from my perspective, this is going to make this a lot easier to bail. And uh, hopefully the white should be back with the baler very soon indeed. We won't start on the corn stalks yet. Um, I will set that up as a course by course at some point. Um, but at the moment, uh, we'll go and get the baler. Here we are at the shop. Um, I will unload this very quickly. Just checking it doesn't need repairing. But it's going to be sad to see this. This baler has been amazing. It really has. So, you know, it's sad to see this stuff go. Um, because it's, you know, it's got us to where we've got to today. This has been, you know, pretty fundamental in getting us, uh, you know, a lot of money from bales. Uh, okay, it's worth 1800 That's not bad, not to be sniffed at. And here's our new baler sitting at £12,000. Now, what if, if I put it down to used second hand? It's 9,600 again. That's a worthwhile saving. Um, so from that perspective, uh, we'll buy the used one and we'll repair it. It just saves us a bit of cash because we really do need to be able to buy this flatbed trailer. And if I buy that flatbed trailer at the moment, I'm going to be down to £300 in the bank. So that is not much at all. Um, obviously that's going to go straight up the moment that we uh, sell our first load of whiskey. So it's not the end of the world, but it is quite a lot of money. So let's repair that. Go back and we'll get this home. So we will see you back at the farm. Okay, while we're waiting for him to come back from the shop, I am just going to go and grab these couple of trees that we found up here uh, and get those chopped up because we know how lucrative that could be. That gives us just a little bit more of a buffer. Um, like I said, we're going to be down to you know a couple of hundred pounds if we're not careful by the end of this. So um, I want to just make sure that we've got enough. So first and foremost, though, we are going to just drop this onto a little course play. This will be ready for the baler as well. There's some good money in these corn stalks, so I want to take advantage of it. Okay, those two trees have given us a full load at the front there and almost a full load at the back. So what I'm going to do, because you do have to, um, you do have to rebuy these. I'm going to sell the full one, but I'm going to leave the other ones. So we'll just get these unloaded. And as you can see, the baler's back as well. So that's a positive. So let me just park here. And I will go and get the loader and I will go and unload these. There's one, and that's a rather nice 3,886. This will be a nice little earner, I hope. We'll drop it in the other cell point. Keep an eye on the money in the top corner. There we go, £4,600. So, very handy. Very handy indeed. Right. It's time for our flatbed. Okay, here we are. Our flatbed is going to be in baling technology, and it is this little IBM here, 30,000. So we're going to take that. Obviously, we're not going to take it factory new, because we can save ourselves 6,000. Um, we're not going to change anything in the colours, but we're going to buy that, because it's a nice big trailer. Now... On top of that, we do have no way of loading this at the moment. Uh, it's not auto load or anything like that. So we're going to ask the shop very kindly if they can lend us their loader. Uh, just for this little trip. It's only over there, so it's not a long trip to go down. But we will get this loaded up. I mean, we could repair it. Is there any point in repairing it? I will repair it. But actually, I'm interested to know. I get that uh, machinery in the fields doesn't uh, 
run as well if it needs repairing. But what about something like a flatbed? Does that make an impact? Is there any changes to that? I'd be surprised if it made any impact. Maybe changes top speed or something, but we could live with that because we've only got this uh, old Mac truck. But we'll drop it over here. You know what? We'll do the right thing. We'll get it repaired. It's not going to cost me much, I'm sure. So £222. That'll do. Let's run this up here and we will... Um, Start loading it up with the pallets that are there. Now, I would like to wait until all the pallets are done. But to be honest, I'd like to make a bit of money as well. So what we'll do is we'll sell any full pallets that are there and see what is left. I mean, this looks like there's five there already, which is great. So what I'm going to do... I do need to do a bit of landscaping around here as well. I'd like to put some tarmac around, expand the area of the, uh, of the tarmac around the field. But we'll get this lined up and we'll get loaded up. So like I said, we've just popped down to the shop to borrow their loader, and we will, it looks like, get four or five pallets loaded up straight away. There could even be another one ready by the time we've got these first few on. So we will be back very shortly. Well, here we are, heading away with our first six full crates of whiskey. So we will see you at the sell point and see what kind of money we are going to make. Okay, so here we are. We just need to pull in here. Now, I'm assuming we just need to drive over the co-op sell point at the back here. Let's get a little bit closer. In fact, I'm not even going to undo the belts. I'm just going to drive over it and see what happens I don't know what the price is at the moment actually but there we go they're getting sold first one didn't go you go a little bit of coaxing but they have sold two so there we go 7400 for that last crate so 45,000 from six cases or six crates of uh, whiskey is pretty spectacular, to be honest. So, um, with that kind of money, we are going to be looking at our new combine very shortly. But for now, from me, the farm sim guy, I think we'll call it there for that episode. We've done a lot today, and we finally sold our first cases of whiskey. So, I will see you on Wednesday for the live stream. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again very soon. Bye for now.